Right, today with me on NFT Stars is Pratik Sethi. He is a producer, a designer, a TEDx speaker, an entrepreneur. He has his own communication design house. He also has a very interesting LinkedIn profile photo, which the video editor will be putting up for you any minute. Uh, but the reason he's here today is to talk about NFTs and to start off with Pratik. The earliest NFT you made was the world's first 3D wheel of life. Now, for common people like me, what does that mean? Okay, so in Buddhism, you have something known as the Bhav Chakra. And the Bhav Chakra is something that you'll find outside uh, Tibetan monasteries and uh, Buddhist mon monasteries, which gives us a, a, a sort of an insight into the learnings of the wheel of life. Um, and that's exactly what we saw always as being a flat representation on the walls as a mural or as a thangka or as a, as a learning point, but always flat. So what we decided that in 2017, I, I, I did an extensive travel across the, the, the Himalayan region and across northern India and into monasteries. And a couple of my friends also uh, became monks. Um, so then I realized that, okay, look, this is something that, why don't we have it in a three-dimensional form? You know, what, what happens behind? What happens on the sides? What is what is the representation of this space? Because earlier on, they were limited with being flat or, or architecture, or, you know, sculptural to, uh, to being very, uh, you know, flat oriented. So we said, okay, let's make it in 3D. And then we decided, Achha, let's make it digital. And then, you know, ek saal laga isko banane mein because it's so detailed, hai. It's, it's so detailed. Uh, it took us a while to actually build it. And then this finally, NFT, NFT it you're saying took you a year to build the 3D model. The, the actual artwork took us a year to build an NFT creation. The minting of it takes less than a couple of seconds. So that that's uh, that's a very quick thing. But the artwork, the the actual 3D model, mm. uh, took us about a year to make because it has so much detail in it. Uh, so yeah, that's why when we created it first uh, and we showed it to a couple of art collectors and artists, art you know like senior art uh, you know connoisseurs, they all were like, okay, this is brilliant. Make it into an actual uh, model. So then we started exploring 3D uh, printing. We started exploring actual sculptors to create it. But then it was just, you know, time cost. Uh, and of course, with 3D printing technology, which became a concern. So we said, okay, let's just go into the NFT zone only and, mm. and uh, you know, publish there for now. Afterwards, once technology has become more exciting, more lucrative, then we can get into the actual building of this uh, 3D model. Okay, okay. And what are, what are some of the other NFTs which you've created? So, uh, so I'll, I'll talk about, so my 10 year old nephew does a lot of drawings. Uh, so we've done a lot of uh, NFTs for him. In fact, you know, a, a couple of hundred of them and uh, they're different auto rickshaws because he's an auto rickshaw fan. He's an automotive fan. So we've done a lot of uh, auto rickshaws for him. Parallel to that, we've also had the pleasure of creating NFTs for other people. Um, so this becomes like a, almost like a, any other gig, like, you know, you're doing animation or you're creating videos or whatever. Creating NFTs is also a gig, which is fairly strong these days and it's happening a lot. So uh, we've, we've created uh, NFTs for a lot of uh, clients in India, abroad and so on and so forth. As, as far as creation is concerned, you know, I was looking at the website. You've also said that you've created uh, virtual metaverses for a lot of brands. Tell us about, you know, maybe, uh, maybe one such brand where you created a very interesting metaverse. So again, I can't, uh, unfortunately take the name of the brand, but what I can tell you is that we are at the cusp right now. So metaverse as, as such has been there since, uh, since, you know, 2010, 2011, uh, any game, which was which interconnected was to other games or any platform like what, uh, you know, Microsoft was doing or, or any platform that was interconnected to multiple platforms in which information could be shared. Uh, is what a metaverse is. So uh, in, in that sense, uh, this technology has been there since 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to go ballistic, right? Because AR and VR has become very, um, very uh, achievable in terms of even the hardware. Mm -hmm. So what I can say is that uh, what we're seeing right now is like version 0.1 of these uh, physical stores. As soon as the, 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 uh, you know, the marketing heads of these companies start getting invested and in understanding that Look, in the digital world, anything is possible. I can have a store, which is my hand could be a store, for example, and it can open into different worlds right here. And I'm, I'm still in this virtual space that I'm in. Real estate has a yeah. whole different equation, you know, and, and that is something once they start understanding and capturing on where sky's the limit, uh, you know, the universe is the limit for imagination and, and retail, so to speak, uh, including learning and so on and so forth as well. So. Uh, it's these are very exciting times. There's a lot being built parallel. Uh, there are not only 
uh, you know, physical spaces and un intangible spaces, but also uh, 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 renditions of what human beings can be. Uh, to just give a hint into, uh, uh, we call them avatars, but that, that's so that's so small and so limited as to what we see even in video games. Mm. Uh, just just you know, it, it's it's going to skyrocket. There's so much being built right now. Uh, and and yeah, we we are playing a small role in in a lot of uh, these larger pictures. So we are sort part. of what it sounds to me like we're maybe sort of heading into a matrix-like scenario, very yeah. into the future. Maybe it's yeah. already happening. We don't know about it in some secret lab or something somewhere. But uh, coming to the coming to the financial aspects of it, you know, last week there was this crypto crash and the the NFT related yeah. thing, and it affected a lot of people. So what are we? How do we go ahead from here? What do you see? is going to happen in the weeks and the months and the years uh, uh, in, in the road ahead. And why exactly did this take place? I mean, apparently there are multiple factors. This is not the first time crypto has dipped, right? I mean, if you've been following it since 2011, it's it's had its dips, it rises, it dips, it rises, it dips, it rises, it dips. It's never plateaued, um, right? And and all the, the stronger currencies like a BTC, ETH, uh, you know, and their uh, peripheral ecosystems will always, um, uh, you know, if you're a holder, hodler, as, as, as one would call it, uh, they will always uh, bounce back. And uh, that's, that's the thing. So this is just another dip in, in the charts. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen again. It's not the first time. Uh, we just have to ride the wave. That's, that's the way to look at it. Sometimes like your RAMs uh, are getting too less, right? Uh, because mm -hmm. there was a chip shortage that happened. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we, there, were, there was a, a cooler fan shortage. Then there were restrictions that were put in China for mining. There were restrictions that were put in, in Spain. Portugal, which is the open crypto land, had concerns that happened. So there's so many of these factors that, that uh, you know, affect the market, so to speak. Uh, and it's an unregulated market. So uh, the, everything like, oh, oh, harbadi, harbadi, harbadi. You know, like so, वो उसमें बहुत कुछ हो जाता है. But you know, there, there's always a baseline that they follow always. Now, my last question for today is uh, is not about NFT. It's something much more personal. Uh, this is something which I read up about you that you've been a survivor of lymphoma cancer when you were a child. Okay. So yes. What what was it uh, like to have? Uh, lymphoma cancer as a child. What exactly is it? Because a lot of people don't know about it and that phase of your life, if you could tell us something about it, because it's a lived experience, so clearly. So, um, I had cancer as a kid, I was about 12, uh, 12, 13 years old, I was, in, I was just, uh, you know, still in school, uh, very young, and uh, obviously it hit us by a storm, and, uh, you know, a year of chemotherapy uh, is, is something that you don't wish for anybody at all, because those the sessions uh, can be quite uh, taxing and it's not like oh ek session khatam ho gaya then you know two weeks break next session those two weeks also your body is fighting it out you you go through hell uh, you know week after week after week uh, what it did teach me though was to live every life uh, moment as uh, as the best i can and enjoy it uh, because you have literally got yolo into my head right like you just you have one life uh, you have to make the most of that moment and everything so uh, you have to go out there, you have to do things, you have to enjoy yourself, you have to make sure everybody around you is happy. Well, great. I mean, uh, and the fact that, you know, you went on to found this design agency, which is an award-winning design agency and so many other things. But best of luck for the future, Pratik. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be in touch for uh, more updates on the NFT market and whatever's happening. Take care. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.